that understand why we have on them clothes right now. Right. Them clothes with the stain of death and what I'm talking about is flesh. Yeah. Can't be born in sin because sin is transgression of the law. So what sin are you doing in the womb when you're being formed for those nine months? Right. You can be shaken in iniquity because when the seed passes from man, this will cause us a problem until Christ's second coming when he restores us back to our original clothing. Either you understand that we can't walk in there with this clothing on. Y'all, this ain't even a clothing that, that Christ gave us coming out of the garden. We put no other folks' clothing now. Think we can get up in the kingdom with Gucci on. <laughs> Gucci! <No. laughs> Gucci! Gucci! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get y'all over here. Let's go to chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Go to your congregation. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. What are done under the sun? All the oppressions. Y'all, look, we're talking about all the oppressions. So, we understand when you're saying, man, ain't no, you ain't walked in my shoes. You don't know what I'm feeling. Yes, we do. If it ain't you, we can go in these 66 books and show you where somebody's having the same oppression. You ain't special. You think Satan picked you out. He was saving his top sins for you. <laughs> go ahead, brother. <laughs> right. And, and behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. And they had no comfort. What they had, they had no comfort. See, Christ, when he left the disciples, he said, I'm not going to leave y'all. What? Comfortless. I'm going to send the comforter back. That's right. Go ahead, bro. And on the side of their oppressors, there was power. What? There was power, sir. But they had no comfort. Uh, Wherefore I praise the dead, which are already dead, more than the living, which are yet alive. Yea, better is he than both they which have not yet been, who have not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. So when he's talking there, he's talking about a living dog is better than a dead lion. But he said the dead king that, look, I know what Abraham done done. I have to praise them more than this guy you're talking about over here. <laughs> yeah, he's selling dope, but man, he's a good guy. Man, you know, when we grew up, man, he took care of my mama. Okay, so is he getting all that money back by pumping heroin into the neighborhood? Now, is he still that good guy? But what he's saying here is, but, but, uh, yeah, better is, better is he than both they which have not been or who have not seen evil work that is done under the sun. Yet yeah, this man, <laughs> weakness ain't even entered to their mind yet. This is possibly these 7,000 that he told Elijah when Elijah thought he was the only one. And he said, I got 7,000, they ain't never bowed and looked to me. You don't know about it. They laying low. I ain't gonna never, I ain't gonna never be caught short. Yeah. If Jezebel put you to death, who do you think I got left? You think you're the only one, Elijah? Right. Right. So he's saying that those who have not tasted of evil yet, those who may have made themselves a eunuch for the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to cut off even thinking about a relationship with a woman. And women who's been young damsels or virgins their whole life. If, if a woman has never had intercourse and she's 90 years old, what is she still called? She still that. Look, Isaac was 37 years old when Abraham put him on the altar to kill him. Because it uses the word lad, L-A-D. Lad means he's an unmarried man. No matter how old he is, he's a young lad. The same way as a dancer, young, and the same as a virgin. If she's 80 and she's never been with a man, she's just an 80-year-old virgin. Plain and simple. What we <laughs> Like this, they had no knowledge until the tree of good and evil hit them. Y'all, this is why we got to be careful with the internet, which is a tree of good and evil also. Ooh. And let our children just put the tablet in their hand with none of the parental rights.
lights checked. <laughs> what you think they do? Huh? All over. They go back into the history. Right. Now, we all know what we're doing, flinching and throwing magazines up under the bed. What do you think they doing? <laughs> what you got, sis? I don't understand the first verse. Uh, the first verse. Verse 1? Just read me. Okay. Please ask the four and one. Uh -huh. So I return and consider all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Solomon talk. Right. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comfort. And on the side of their oppressors there was power, but they had no comfort. It, it would be like if you in America, like you a fresh slave. Your oppressors got all the power. They got the nuclear war. Just what's happening in Israel now against the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Their company is trying to hurl the few rockets they got and throwing crumbled up rocks from the building that the Israelis is blowing up. But they feel it now. We need a ceasefire. 34 dead on the, on the Edomite side, 800 on the Palestinian mm -hmm. side. You have 1.6 million people in a space about the size of Wilson. Mm -hmm. If they bomb, you don't have a chance. The borders are closed everywhere you can run to. So what do they mean dropping leaflets? Where you gonna run to when the bomb destroys every place that you can even run to because of the small location right. and everybody got their borders locked? That's oppressed by the oppressor with the power and there's no comfort for them. Because guess what? Our lion showing up for this war. Sure. Mm. The boom god is high. <laughs> And when Christ told us he was sent back to comfort her, because they said, look, you was our comforter. You finna leave? We didn't watch what you did. Mm. Now you done resurrect. You finna leave us like this? And you just told us what the Romans gonna do. Mm. They, you said they come and they gonna destroy, they gonna cast some of us in jail. We're, we're gonna be our comforter. Like we asked today, what are we gonna do about the poor folks beating us down like this? Mm. About that, that power, that oppressive words, our comforter. Mm. That's what it means, sister. They didn't have no comfort. He saw all of the oppression. Yeah. Same thing Christ said, but Christ would leave us like this. He said, don't worry about it. I'm going to send that soothing, that healing bomb back to you in the form of what's called the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to do the right things to receive it. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. First forward. Are you that good, sis? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 4. Uh -huh. Again, I consider it all travail. And every right work that for this a man is envied of his neighbor. What is he? A man is envied of his neighbor. See, he considered all the trail. Everything that could create problems for us, we can talk about, man, when you just don't understand. Every travail has already been looked at. Man, because it's a book of life. You know, it has a remedy for everything. If it didn't, it wouldn't be telling you to put it up against anybody else. So all of the travail. And he, a man, a man that every right word for this man is envy of his neighbor. When and when we talk about right work, we talk about when a man realizes it ain't about which one of us is right; it's what's right. Mm -hmm. If we ain't coming from that perspective, then we're fooling ourselves. When a man comes from that perspective, let's get off of what me and you feel what's right, right. and what's wrong with doing right. A man can be envy for that. Because you'd be scowled upon because they <laughs> What's wrong with doing right? That's all you have to say. A soft answer turn away rap. They both make it in the arms. <laughs> and you just say, what's wrong with rap? I mean with right. <laughs> Nothing. But I just, I just don't like the way you say it. <laughs> right. Right. Go ahead, brother. First of all, again, uh, again, I considered all travail and every right word, right? That for this a man is envy of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. Perfect example of this, y'all, when we talk about the Bible always interprets itself, is the, the envy Saul had for King David. He was already king, but he was a chump. What the chap was a chump. <laughs> so he envied David, would just throw his spirit at him. Right beside his head, and David had to play that instrument of ten strings that we just read about in Psalm 92 to drive that evil spirit away. Mm. 
is how powerful music is. The right music drives the evil spirit away. Where do you think they get the term music? Music soothes a savage beast. The right music soothes a savage beast. No, no. The wrong music will turn no, up no. a savage beast. <laughs> Of whip on a horse, 
You know, that keeps the horse. When you're in the Kentucky Derby, you see them whipping the horse. You whip the horse with any cowboy, you just ride, you whipping it with something. Giddy up. You know, and then it say a, a bridle for the ass because the donkey, you have to steer him when you're on him. You know, steer him a bridle for the donkey. And what it say? A rod. A rod. A rod. For the fools we're in. Now we know all through there's a spiritual rod first. Here and obey. That's the first thing, just like your parents tell you. They don't have to just start whooping to make you obey first. They tell you these are the rules of the house. I'm going to work. When I come back, I expect it to be like this. These are the rules. If they're not like that, the first thing they ask you is just like the most high ask you, just like Satan asks you. What did I tell you? Satan always asks, what did the most high tell you? Yes, sir. Well, he said we're supposed to keep his commandments. Good, then you know. Look at this bag of tricks that I had. <laughs> well, I, I, I got a little bit of lust in this bag. Well, I got some fornication in this bag. Well, you just look at this. All that for me? Look, he offered Christ the same gifts in Matthew 4, didn't he? Look, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world your father gave to me to run. I'll give you them. Now, who do you pray? Look at America now. You think this is the kingdom Christ is talking about? What do we want with this? Fire and brimstone. With this spot and wrinkle. Fire and brimstone. Read some more, brother. Verse 4. What does it say? Answer not a fool according to his father. See, don't answer a fool according to his father. When you hear something so far way off the top, it's a time when you just don't answer that. You just got to know what I'm going to be called. What it's going to do but make you angry. And he will be going in circles with this dude. Like, 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 like numbskull, right? right? Man, this dude just said, like, I've been trying to know this, right. I had to cut it off this week, man. But man, this dude just said, Jesus tell Christ. Tell him, tell him, Y'all know him. Some of y'all down there know him, Shane. Yeah. The, the, the brother that was leaving him beside me. <laughs> man, he been part of this church, but then decided he had some envy and personal hatred and decided to go on a sneak attack. And was found wanting. Now he just searches diligently for something else he hoping. And then he just say foolish thing. What is that? I you know, no, I've been asking him, what son of David? I just keep drilling because he keeps saying David. I'm like, what son are we talking about? Right. He don't never get an answer, but he keeps saying, it can't be JC. It can't be JC. Think about it. He didn't have a lineage. Did you see read? Man, the Matthew 1, Luke 3 tell you the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. Right. Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, and on down. He never had a bloodline. Right. What is this dope? I'm not even gonna have to die, right? This is too I just type back, this is too easy laughing out loud. Right. Kept moving, you feel me? Yeah. That would be an example of not even asking. No answer because you know at this point he at least been with us for 12 years and you asked him that. Either we was that terrible and you was a man in the whole time of a bunch of crap for 12 years. Or you done failed to the level of foolish talk. That's the life. You know what I mean? But, but come at it with deception like he finna truly break you off, dare you. If y'all had a Seen them when we had that private session unwrapping them cards. I mean, scowling at us, looking like Big Red on the five part piece, like we don't know his business out.
So that, that's what it's saying also, to be an observer. So it's saying because you're listening anyway, you're like, this fool is oh, You're making an observation. Ain't no need going with this one. It's going way down the line. Mm -hmm. Ain't no need me getting into this one. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. Verse 5. Answer a fool according to his father. So now is this a contradiction? <coughs> Read verse 4 and then verse 5. One said, don't ask him. Now this one is saying, answer a fool. Go ahead. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. See, so now it's telling you, look, if he get wise in his own conceit, and you know it's already foolish, but he's challenging you, and you got a brother here that's trying to learn some things, and right. he threw something that, 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 that may be above his head, then you got to shut that foolish talk yeah. down. Gotcha. For the brother's sake. Right. You have to answer them in his foolishness because that's when they'll do it. They, they know when you got somebody fresh in there and they'll throw it out there. This is why the terms always come up when you're hearing talking about something. Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. That's the key word, y'all. Y'all always hear. Think about it. So what they're telling you is it could be your own thoughts. Just think about it. <laughs> Think about that. What well, we just read it. Isaiah 55, 89. Most times they say my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm. What you think about? Right. Where we at? That's it for that. Okay. Back to Ecclesiastes 4. Yeah, we're going back to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Back to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Uh -huh. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 4 and 7. Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. What is vanity? Mm. Mm. Vanity is what's considered as void or worthlessness. Void or worthlessness. Wasting your time. Wasting of time. <laughs> vanity. Spinning the wheels. Go ahead. There is one alone. Uh -huh. And there is not a set. Right? Yea. He had neither child nor brother. Right? Yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, for whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity. Yea, it is a sore travail. See, the key sore travail with that is his eyes are satisfied with his riches. Shalom, man. Shalom, man. Shalom. Shalom. This is what we're talking about when Christ talks about holy shall a rich man and into the kingdom. When your eyes become satisfied with your riches, he's saying that neither is his eyes satisfied with riches. Neither would it be that verse 18. Uh -huh. It says, there is one alone, right. and there is not a second. Right. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother. Right. Yet is there no end of all his labor. Right. Neither is his eyes satisfied with riches. And, and he's a, well, he's going, he, it's what we call greed at this point. Yes. You know, when, when you're not satisfied with your with the riches, like, I got this amount. It's like this. It's like somebody just signed the NBA contract, five million for two years. Why is he already considering buying 20 kilos and becoming an illegal millionaire when you're a legal millionaire already? Right. His eyes are not satisfied with his riches, so he trade in righteous millions just to be seen of the oppressor or envy the ways of the oppressor that his eyes is not satisfied with because he's saying he's laboring. What are you laboring for? If you sell and don't miss it, well, do whatever you do, do with all your might, but when you stack up all this money, where can you spend it? There's a $10,000 limit on anything you can put in the bank. You can try to wash the money. But what can you go by without taxes being paid and there's a tracking mechanism? How are you going to put an $80,000 Range Rover in front of Big Mama's house on Coke Green and you already got two Mercedes parked out the front? On Coke Green? You think that her Social Security, the tax amount, pays for this? Who you think you fool? So you will have enough riches, but they, they, they'll come to know. The banks tell every bank, we protect your money up to 100000 You put two million in here, it's not a and crash, you have 1000 100000 we can guarantee you. 
So a lot of people start thinking, man, I got to stop. I got to get it all. I got to get all the kids. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to work sun up to sun down. Well, guess what happens with that? No Sabbath rest. Right. Right. The brain never gets the time to calm down and reboot itself. Like when you try to work on something, you can't get it. And what you do, you go away and you rest. And then when you come back, you put it right together. Damn, right there. Too much going on up here. That's the main thing the Sabbath rest was for. From all that talk, from all this oppression we just talked about, who has the power. One day, the most I said, you need to get away from all of that. And clear your mind. There's other work to be done. If your mind's so bogged up with that, then what you gonna do about this? That's just earthly riches. All you're gonna have is a bunch of stuff that you're able to buy, but you did time. You can't enjoy none of it. 